The maintenance planning document is the source document for the maintenance program. It's the output document of the MRBR, the Maintenance Review Board Report. It's also where the manufacturer, the type certificate holder, puts the information concerning the airworthiness limitations. Okay, we've got a nice picture here looking at the various uh, content that goes in here. We can see we've got the MRB here. We can see the MSG3 analysis. We can see here we've got the system safety analysis, SSA. We understand hopefully now that this belongs to the type certificate holder, the manufacturer. This belongs to the maintenance review board. We've also got some other stuff going on here. We're doing analysis concerning structural integrity, damage tolerance, and so on and so on and so on. As an industry, we're understanding more and more, and that's what makes the whole process safer. And all of this stuff, this one is uh, fuel airworthiness limitations. All of these guys finish up in the MPD. And we can see here we've got airworthiness directives, service bulletins, service information letters, uh, all operator telexes, consolidated the different sources, uh, revised each time the MPD baseline source document is revised at the exception of life limited parts. Here we've got the CMR, the Certification Maintenance Requirements. Here we've got Design Tolerant Airworthiness Limitation Items. As we said, some inspections become applicable at 40,000 hours or 15,000 cycles, for example. So we have in the MPD, we have, remember, it's a task-driven process. So every task that we perform as part of our maintenance activity is documented in the MPD. Here we can see there is a description of the various tasks. Here we have a skill code, in this case, airframe. Here we have the work that's required for the preparation. Here we have a task code. In this case, it's operation. We will see this in more detail. Skill code, airframe, avionic, cabin, electrical, power plant, lubrication, non-destructive test, radio or utility. These are just terms that are used in the MPD document. It doesn't mean that we have different groups of people for each of these activities. Not at all. Here we're talking about the scope of the various activities. Here we're talking about different task codes. Let's understand what we've got here. Uh, BSI is a boroscope inspection. Uh, sometimes we do a boroscope inspection in the engines. We can also do boroscope inspections in other areas of the aircraft. Check. A check is not the same as a general visual inspection. And this terminology is not universal. 
This terminology is universal. This terminology could be written in a, a different way by different mani uh, uh, manufacturers. So you have to pay attention to the wording in the MPD and make sure that we understand what's expected. Because if the task is to perform a check, exactly what they want us to do is check for condition, leaks, fluid reserve, tension, fluid level, leak, check detector, check charge pressure. That's what we mean by check. This is a detailed inspection. We have, for a detailed inspection, standard terminology, but it will have additional information identifying what makes it detailed. Uh, discard task. What is a discard task? We throw it away. Finished. However, when we throw things away, we've got to make sure that we throw them in such a way that nobody could ever use it again. Mm -hmm. So, just throwing something away in the bin is not acceptable. So, really when we say discard, it should say smash and discard. Really. Uh, the detailed inspection, is it the same thing as inspect? Or inspect is different from detailed inspection? I, inspect is ambiguous. I, I'm, I'm, it doesn't say, here it doesn't say inspect anyway. Yeah, no, I can't say anything like no. inspect, that's what I'm uh, Because it's ambiguous. Okay. What does inspect mean? And, and, and you've got to really take it the stage further. Now what they've done, they've given us a detailed understanding of what we mean by a general visual inspection. And the majority of our inspections, in actual fact, are general visual inspections. And we now know how to do it. Uh, inspect, I can inspect during a walk around. So during the walk around, I'm looking at the aeroplane. This is an inspection. It's a walk around inspection. Very, very different. So we need to be careful with the criteria and how we specify exactly what we want to achieve. Uh, function check, test, and of course the function check will be in accordance with the aircraft maintenance manual. Typically page 501 function test. Each reference will have page 501 function test. Uh, LU lubrication. As we said before, lubrication is probably the most important thing we can do to maintain the life of the aeroplane. Here we've got an operation check or test, and again, this will appear in the maintenance manual. Uh, remove for restoration. This guy can be restored. It can be uh, made almost good again, almost new again, and again it's, it can be used. So uh, there is information concerning what we can do. For example, when you take an engine off the aeroplane and you split the engine, inside the engine hot section, we have the blades, the hot blades, we can restore them. We spray them with plasma. We build up the blade, we rework it, and we're good to go again. So there is an example of a restoration task. Uh, SDI, special detailed inspection, it will give information as to why. You tell me it's a special inspection, I'll say, okay, very nice. Why is it a special inspection? Because it doesn't actually mean anything on its own. You need the additional supporting documentation or criteria. This is a special inspection because you have to dismantle it, you have to take the cover off, you have to look inside. That's what makes it special. Or whatever else it says. Maybe you have to do some uh, NDT, maybe you have to do ultrasonic, or eddy current, or magnaflux, or x-ray. Uh, this one, servicing, drain, service, replenishment, the fluid change. We remove the fluid, maybe we flush it and replace it. Uh, temporary protection system, what's this? Well, I've opened something up and the task is to temporarily protect it. 
and at the end of it to restore it. And finally, we've got a visual check. So there's three checks going on here. There's the, actually, there's, there's more than three, but the, the, there's check, visual check, and general visual inspection. General visual inspection is the controlled inspection, is the important one that's connected directly with the MSG3 process. The other ones are included as part of the MPD package. And it will tell us what we are expected to do. A visual check, I'm, I'm giving a visual check for you. This is a visual check. For a general visual inspection, I've got to get up close. Detail, I've got to get a magnifying glass. Okay, what we're looking at here is an example of how we escalate over time the threshold of checks. Have a look at this. Uh, this was the beginning of the A320. And we can see here entry into service 350 hour A check. And here we are 400 hour A check. 500 hour A check. 600 hour or 100 days or 750 flight cycles. 750 flight hours, 120 days or 750 flight cycles. So this is the development. So we can go 120 days, four months, between the checks on this aeroplane. When it started, it was 350 hours. If we did 10 hours in a day, it would be 35 days. Now, it could be 120 days. And that's taken, this is 2011, and this is going back year by year to, I think, 1985. So you can see how it's evolved. 